Hey everybody, this is Dan from the Heritage Corridor Business Alliance. We're down here in downtown Chicago, checking out the 2022 Chicago Auto Show. Our friend Dean Fox from Leading Solar Solutions is here. He's going to tell us a little bit more about electric vehicle chargers. Let's go on, check out the show and go find Dean. We're here with Dean Fox, the lead of Solar Solutions here at the 2022 Chicago Auto Show. Dean, tell us a little bit about Leading Solar Solutions and why you're here today. We are Leading Solar Solutions out of Mobile, Illinois. And what we provide is EV installations for levels two and three. With that, we also provide solar and more commercial and residential. Uh, and we feel that there's a huge need in our marketplace, uh, Illinois and Indiana, uh, for EV chargers, uh, whether it be level two or level three. We find that the challenging part of owning an electric car is finding a charging station if you don't have one installed in your home. And then also, uh, you know, get caught in traffic and know that your power is going to run out and that you have some uh, sufficient charging station that could be located in your home and or your business. So in Chicago, Illinois in general, there's not many uh, EV chargers. There are a select few that are out there. And so we wanted to capitalize and educate the end user that we can provide those services for them too. So that's the reason why we're here at the auto show. We're right across, uh, we're right across the way from the EV uh, racetrack indoor that uh, McCormick Place provided. So we figure this is a great opportunity for people that are either buying a new EV or just recently bought one or have one already that haven't really uh, entertained the level two charger. And the nice thing about that is you can charge a car in, in the convenience of your own home. Two, it's safe. You don't have to be in a parking lot at a grocery store uh, in a different surrounding. And two, it's economic. You uh, have your adjusted rate to get a utility company where if you're using a third party charger out there, they can change the rates on your as well. So we're here today and the rest of the week uh, on the 21st of the year. We are in Foods SH. 126, we're right next to the Marines. Uh, so if you know of anybody, uh, or you know somebody that's going to get a new car, or electric car in the future, come to come down and see me. Um, we're taking $200 off for the end of uh, June uh, for an EV installation. And uh, that's exciting. Um, so if you have some questions too, you can reach out to us at 877 Seven seventy one forty two, or you can email us at dean. You guys were here last year or in July, uh, which I think is July. That's correct. You guys were here in July. It's kind of they had a uh, little bit different of a version than typical car show. Did you see kind of an increase from July to now in the number of electric electric vehicles here? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, great point. So, yeah, there was a select few that were here in July, and um, this year it's like they just un unveiled probably 50% of their inventory here in all of the new cars that are coming out. Uh, what we're finding out on a select few cars, there is some lead times on them, but what we've been talking to to the customers that have been coming into the booth and are calling is that don't wait to the last minute to get your level two charger. So do it ahead of time. Because what happens is that when they sell you an EV, when they sell you an EV car, you get just a level one charging port, which if you don't know anything about the EV charging uh, systems and how they work, there's levels one, two, and three. Levels one is your 110. Uh, level 2 is your 200 amp, and then level 3 is your DC uh, fast charger. So, level 1 is basically your standard outlet that you and I have in our homes. It can take up to 24 plus hours. So, what I try to tell the customers, nobody tells you that, and don't let the EV car dictate your lifestyle. You want to be able to get going in your car 
fully charged and not wait an hour or two or a day or half a day to get on with your life. Um, so we always recommend find out how many hours you're going to work, what what is you, you're trying to get out of your EV car, because if you're doing 300 plus miles a week, you want to get a car that has 300 plus miles of charging on your vehicle. Because there are some cars that have 100 miles, there are some cars that have 200 or 200 miles. So you want to, based on your lifestyle, you want to make sure that you have just enough miles and a proper charging uh, unit as well. And we recommend the level two, just to get started if you're looking to buy it. Okay, for example, let's see what today is Valentine's Day. Some of you may be watching this and saying, I gotta go real quick and actually get some good card, get flowers, things of that nature. You don't want to be dependent on the level one hoping this charges just so you can get out and stay in face and get that card. By the way, Honda got the card on the way here. Um, well, I guess a similar way to kind of put it would be, you know, I have an iPhone. You don't want the little cord that takes forever to charge. You want that's because you want to be using your phone. Yeah, no, and again, you know, one of the questions that came up, it's like, you know, we, we had a while back, there was uh, a bad accident that was on one of the expressways, and the cars were, were you know, bottled, bottled up for at least about good eight, nine hours. And so the question comes up, like, what would happen if I had an EV vehicle and the, the my, my battery was running low and I needed to keep the heat on and stay warm? What do I do? And those are the questions that come up is, yes, AAA does have portable units that can come out and charge your car to uh, get you next uh, charging destination. But again, if you have, you know, 100 miles per charge versus 200 miles per charge and you're on that last leg, that could be a problem. So that's why we feel that there's a huge demand for the proper level charging station whether it be for your home and or your business. So we want to make your life very, very easy. And you mentioned too about having that charger actually before you get the car. What is the lead time typically for that? I shouldn't say typically, but kind of right now for a Well, so I would say that people buy an EV car and then right away they, they call us up and say, I need it installed tomorrow. I mean, we're booked out usually a month in advance, I would say. Uh, and we do have cancellations, but I would say it's always in the customer's best interest, uh, interest to, if you're going to order a vehicle and you know what's coming within the next month or so, get that level two installed. Install. And so some of the first steps to find out if you are, if you are a candidate to get the level two right away, if you have to pay service in your home, you're in the driver's seat. All we have to do is just set up a separate breaker for you and set up that charger in your garage. Uh, some of the older homes have water service. Uh, in order to get that level two fast charge, you're going to need to go up to uh, upgrading your electrical box. So those are some of the caveats that you need to know. Uh, so super the better. Um, so I recommend you do that if you're looking at a car in the yeah. As I admit, I'm not the most familiar with electric charging. If you get a charger, are they compatible with most brands? Yeah, if you get a charger, universal chargers, uh, pretty standard. Like, to give you an example, the Lima 1450 is a standard um, charging unit box that you can put any kind of charging port into. Uh, again, if you hardwire it, the proprietary specifically for um, like a BMW or you're going with some of the other electric cars. If they're hardwired, that's only going to work with that specific car. Uh, so, but if you put a universal, then anybody can use that charger on a level two. So, I always say that if you have family members coming in, you want to have that universal charger so they can plug and play, especially if your kids are coming in from out of town on holidays. But yes, there are some that are hardwired specifically for that particular.
And that makes sense because I know there's a lot of businesses that are in a TV show. Uh, I know we talked a little bit about flying, you can see all the places and some other, other places being in charge. What are some businesses that should consider being in charge? Well, I would say that any business that does a considerable amount of uh, traffic flow, whether it be a hair salon, whether it be a bank, a uh, restaurant, uh, they're going to be there for an hour plus. So, you got to go exercise that. You don't give them plug your car in where you're at yoga, or you're going to the dermatologist, uh, or you're visiting your house. You know, in high traffic areas, you definitely want to do that. And so it is a nice amenity to know that your car is charging when you just left your insurance, your insurance agency. And it just makes life easier. This is going to be the new norm. Um, and so in some cases, from a business owner, they can capitalize on it because they can change, they can charge the customers uh, a decent rate while they're getting their hair done. They can change that. So you, you can make a little money off of it, but more so it's more of an amenity for the customer. Uh, so that's what we're seeing. Those are the customers that we're catering to. Um, and this is going to be the new one. So we're excited about that. And it's probably something where the business owner can almost just look outside and see, okay, are you getting one reflector deal? Or are you starting to get more and more these days? Because soon, I mean, we're all going to be in electric vehicles at some point in time in the future. No, absolutely. You know, people say, well, how do you know where the next charging station is at? Well, that could be, like, as I just mentioned, it could be that insurance agency that has an EV charger in front of their building, and you just happen to get off the turnpike, and you can... So the archery car there for a half hour uh, to get back on the road. And it will be on the grid. And there are apps, you know, charge point uh, has that capability. Blink has that capability. So you're always gonna have that dialed into your entertainment center. There's probably a lot of people like me that are you know well, obviously you can always do it, yes. Yeah. Probably a lot of people have their big fancy sports cars, muscle cars, and need that gas, and need that more. What are, you know, what's some of the ways that would convince me to go electric? You know, is there a cost savings? Yeah, so, great question. You know, it, it came up with, with our team. It comes up with our customers quite a bit. And so here's what I would say. Um, you know, you're always going to have the guys that have the muscle car and they love the, uh, the combustible engines. Uh, what I would say is there's a big delta in regards to the maintenance of the other cars. One, you want to you want to eliminate that carbon footprint. We know that that's the direction that we want to go. Uh, so, two, you also want to save some money. And so, with that, statistically, if you own a gas vehicle versus an electric. Gas vehicle is roughly twelve hundred dollars a year in maintenance versus electric, which is about three hundred twenty-four dollars. Yeah, so that's a huge delta. So now you're talking about the gas, all of the fluids, um, all the maintenance that normally comes in with the vehicle, the uh, gas vehicle. So electric, you don't have all that. The only thing that you have to replace is your brakes, your tires. Put some weeks on in there, and then depending on the vehicle, you have, between six to eight years, you have to replace your battery. And even with that expense, you're still ahead of the game. So if you have an electric car that runs 200 miles and a gas car that runs 200 miles, the difference is roughly about eight thousand dollars in savings on, on that time frame with the miles that you put on electric versus gas. Uh, so that is a huge delta. Now, what does the charger cost mean? Is that what? So, so charger costs, you know, range, again, depending on your electrical setup in your house. If you have 100 amp, we have to upgrade the 200 amp to get you out like two. Uh, some people are fine with level one based on the lifestyle, might be your second power. Uh, but a great question. So, what I tell people, the average cost is about $33 or $100. But now, if we have to navigate, we have a detached garage, and from your electrical box in your basement to your garage, about, let's say, 80 to 125 feet. Copper's expensive, you got to pay for the conduit. It can go up to 
Depending on the distance. If it's an attached garage, that's even better. If it's if it's a the basement stairs, that's even better. So there's a lot of things that we ask prior uh, before giving a price because everybody says, "What's the price? What's the price?" Yeah, and it's, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of moving parts, and we got to answer our questions. But to answer your question, it's about thirty-three hundred dollars is the average uh, price to install level two trusses. Which you're still saving money in the long run, considering the savings. Well, the savings not only that is the resale value of your home. So I say for this younger generation that are buying the Teslas and the, uh, many of the EV cars that are on the market, um, they want to move yeah. to a, a condo, a town home, a single family home that has an EV charger. And they don't, they'd rather not move it if it's already there. So these downtown high rises in the city, a lot of them, the majority of them, 80, 90% don't even have the EV chargers. And the younger generation, they're not looking at an EV car right now already counted. Okay. So you're going to get your EV back if you install that just in your home for future sale. But if you have an EV car or you just want to have it for when you sell it out because you're empty nesters and your kids are already out there in the world and you're getting rid of your house. So those are some of the things that I always say you can recoup your, your investment. So very small expense for the convenience and the safety. Uh, and efficiency of having EV charging. Yeah, let alone you don't have to go to the gas station every time. No. Yeah. Well, Dean, thank you so much. Thanks for inviting us down to the Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. And definitely we'll have more with Dean in kind of future episodes of future uh, social media videos. So thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, and we'll actually put all this contact info at the bottom of the screen so that way you can get a hold of him and you know, get that EV charger now. Again, our, uh, we have special going on to the end of June. Uh, so please give us a call. Come visit us at the show. Bring us your dreams. Stop on by. We also call me. We can come out and get a free consultation. It doesn't cost you anything. So but thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate it.